Hi everyone, it's Rebecca Coombs from The Healthy Gut and I have the great pleasure of sitting down with Dr. Alison Seebecker at the end of the SIBO Symposium. Now, some of the things that uh, you at home have been really uh, asking a lot of questions about is the concept that SIBO is the cause or is the result of an underlying condition. So rather than trying to answer your questions myself, I've decided to <laughs> literally speak to the original source of that. Um, so Alison, it would be great if you could just explain that concept for people watching this video. Well, there's, there's sort of two concepts to, to understand. There's underlying cause and then cause or risk factor. An underlying cause would be what's actually going wrong in the body to allow SIBO to happen and by that I mean to allow bacteria to accumulate in the chamber or the place of the small intestine because that is very abnormal um, and so that means structurally or functionally what is what is wrong there that's one concept and then the other concept is what caused that and so those are the risk factors and causes that cause the underlying causes and causes are things like diseases drugs lifestyle surgery injury genetics things like that there's very many risk factors or causes that's kind of a synonym there of the underlying causes and there's only a few underlying causes so the the underlying causes the most common and most agreed upon are deficiency of the migrating motor complex in the small intestine and small intestine structural abnormality, like anatomical or structural abnormality. And then the causes or risk factors are so many. Yeah. Just a few examples would be food poisoning, um, adhesions would be a structural one. Um, what are some of the other ones we mentioned? All kinds of things. Uh, oh, proton pump <laughs> yeah. inhibitors, pain medicines, um, many diseases, diabetes, Ehlers-Danlos, um, hyperthyroid. There's so many things. Those are, well, those are some diseases and some drugs. Lifestyle factor would be stress, emotional, emotional or psychological stress, and um, injury or surgery that can cause um, adhesions, things like that. And another question that a lot of people have asked is how do they determine what is the underlying cause? Um, and I think this is quite difficult sometimes to understand what it is. I know for myself, I look at those that whole gamut and I have a whole, I tick a lot of boxes. Yeah. There wasn't just one thing I don't think that caused me to end and up you know, with SIBO. That is true. For most, I think for most people I see, or at least maybe half the people I see, it's a, it's a combination of factors and it's like one all adds up like which one was it or was it all of them yep. and it's like I think they stack upon each other mm -hmm. and build and then there's one that's a final one that you know brought the straw that broke the camel's back yeah. but um, the way to the way to figure it out is a bit tough for the migrating motor complex because the test for that is antiduodenal manometry um, which is done with an endoscopy tube and not at many places um, you need to go to a gastroenterology center that does that test and it's pretty hard to come by. You can get it done, you can, but it's just not something everyone's gonna run and be doing. Um, there's an indirect test for that, which is the new IBS check test that um, is what Dr. Pimentel developed that checks antibodies in your blood for vinculin and CDTB. What was that? I don't, but I don't think that one's available in Australia. Oh, okay, so then we great, can just cut that out. But, but it's, great, it's great for um, the American viewers because we do have a lot of people in America who are, who are watching okay. the video. So but for, in Australia, unfortunately, that's not available. So, but the only thing is about that, that test is that uh, it, only, it only checks, it's an indirect check for the migrating motor complex deficiency if the way you got it, your risk factor or cause was from food poisoning. So you could take the test and have mm -hmm. it be negative. You could still have deficient migrating motor complex because the true test is duodenal manometry. And then for a structural abnormality, um, the most all-encompassing test would be a barium small intestine series, which is a test you go into a radiology center for. Those are the two most common tests we can use. We, we really need better options. Mm, we do. And Alison, if there's, if there, if you could summarize, uh, you know, all of the wonderful things we've heard and learnt um, this weekend at the SIBO Symposium, do you have a, one key takeaway that you're coming away from this conference that uh, that you can share with people watching the video? Well, for me, I think I'd say it's hard. Like SIBO <laughs> is a hard condition to treat for the majority of people and the majority of practitioners. It's a hard condition to treat. Um, sometimes a hard condition to, to get better from because it's chronic for a lot of people. But the, the, but the thing from the symposium is that there are so many smart, good people, doctors and people 
working on it, that we're all helping each other to try and, and figure it out and do a better job with it. And that's my big takeaway is like, we're all helping each other and we're learning and we're getting better. Yeah, and I think in 10 years time, when we look back at this period of time, we'll know so much more in the future, but it's great that we now know about SIBO and there are people out there that can work with you if you're suffering from SIBO. And, and I think something that I've taken away is, you know, if, if you don't feel that you're getting the right support now, keep looking. Oh, Go yeah. and find that oh, yeah. team of people. And that's what I did. I built my support team and it involved a naturopath and a personal trainer, a psychologist, yeah. a dietitian, and I built my team around me that could support me to to get better again and I think that's a really important very thing. Important. don't stop at the first hurdle because this is a quite a chronic and uh, often long-term illness and with all the information that you know that I myself and others have put out their good professional information um, a lot of patients do know more than than the doctors they see because mm. the doctors haven't yet been educated it's just a unfortunate circumstance so if you do know more keep going till you find someone who's open to learning what you know um, and hearing what our what us as professionals have put out there um, or find someone who knows yeah wonderful and as a little thank you for just your uh, invaluable support and knowledge and information that you have given to the SIBO community I have uh, two copies of my cook books, uh, the SIBO Summer Cookbook and the SIBO Family Favourites Cookbook, which has just come out, uh, just in time for me to come to America. But I would love for you to have these copies Thank because uh, when <laughs> I first so got diagnosed much. with SIBO <laughs> and I then heard about That's you, awesome. you really were an inspiration to me and I learned so much from your website. So thanks for everything that you do. On behalf Thank of you. every SIBO person out there, thanks for everything that you do. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. We'll cry together. <laughs> Um, so I hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, stay tuned for more updates uh, as I uh, disseminate a lot of the information that I've learnt from the SIBO Symposium and I'll be sharing that amongst my platforms soon. I'm Rebecca Coombs with Dr Alison Sieber-Mecker and we'll see you soon.